we needed a tea shop so what I'm going to do is little Tudor one it might be a bit of interesting to some people um, so I've drawn the upstairs how I like it I've then drawn the side wall and because it's a little bit older I'm going to take off this piece so this one I'm going to cut off I did one of these uh, years ago and we and we did it in wood and I absolutely loved it I thought it was a lovely building we don't have many children ones where we came we come from but it's out well so we can have children so if I cut this off there and I think do it in foam board it's really simple um, so what we're going to do obviously that will come to the front like so and then we'll cut that off and put it to the back and I'll put some windows in big windows a nice door um, we'll have it as the old tea shop we'll brick the bottom part of this part that'll be brick so we'll so much of that column and then we'll see where we go from there but now I'm just going to transfer this part which is the carry on of the Tudor across to here and um, so it's I don't know a lot about Tudor buildings I have to admit Let's hope I can get away with it and it looks something like so um, I'll take the same size down there so I've got that now what do I think would we put diagonals in there just to match going round and then just leave them straight up like that I think that would be the answer so the, the way I do the diagonals I'll draw it like that I'll draw one like that and of course this one needs to be a little bit cheaty because I need to be an inch that across all you're doing with this is just marking it so that when you draw your diagonal in it doesn't run out a square if you if you did that from that corners of that one it would look onto the other two so again to separate them into my little pieces what I like Don't worry about all the all the pencil marks because you will take all I will rub all them off as I'm going along. Um, so I've copied that onto there. I'm gonna take that line, ignore that line. So now what I'm gonna do is again I'm not putting a piece of a panel at the back, that's just gonna end. And the reason being this is he's supposed to go backwards further into the actual distance so don't put things in what shouldn't be there so the next one we'll be taking these straight across so I do this with me small scraber I've lost it Patricia would it be that one it'd be that one so Take that one across. 
putting that one across. I'm on the right line, aren't you? That one. That one. That one. And match that up. And then we'll do the main one, which is obviously part of the roof spare. Which will come, I will presume, all the way down. These would go in between. So it's there, there, and there. This one would be there, there, and there. You have to make absolutely sure that was the correct lab before you scrub it. Yeah. I'm never 100% certain myself at times. Also, you've got to remember not to go heavy handed with the pencil. No, that is about getting to not pressing really hard with the pencil lines because at the end of the day, we can just rub them off. And then turn that one round. Oh. Right, all I'm doing now is literally, I don't know if you can see that, you're just scrubbing it to look like wood. I mean, when Pat's painted this, it will stand out um, as oak timbers. Um, the one I built for in plywood, I actually put it out, out of square. I built it out of square on badness, so it had a slight lean on one corner. I don't know if I could do that in Formex. It's, it's, it's very precise, but boy, it did look good with it slightly leaning. You have to live outside. That's the one thing to do. That um, One of our old policies is if we went to buildings finished, once it's been undercoated, uh, and on the court, it varnished, it goes out, it stays out. Um, there's now quite a lot of buildings out there. Yeah, so we've just finished the signalman's cottage, so we'll, um, we'll take a film of that shortly and upload it so you can see what that's finished like. I'm just currently just finishing off the advertisements on the brickwork. So, um, so you can see where I'm going with it. I'll trim this other one off. See the markings. So I'll cut that one off. Maybe we'll do if I get right to the end. There we are. Um, and now you can see that that's going to go like so. So that protrudes. Yeah. And the windows sure. will be underneath. They'll be underneath. So now this part, what I'm going to do is just our standard brickwork. What we had noticed as well on all these old buildings, 
I mean, if you go to the really old buildings um, in Norfolk and Suffolk and around there, Long Melton and things, there, there was caved and bent and all sorts because that's what they was using, actual parts of the old galleons and things like that to make out of. Um, so again, it wouldn't be something you couldn't do. I think be, if anybody fancies going and doing it to that extent, I'm sure you'd be able to do it quite easily. And that's that bit. Uh, Pat sometimes goes in with a bit thicker lines and just messes them up a bit and things like that because I tend to do them pretty neat when I'm doing it. But that is the first part complete. So that one uh, will just glue onto there. Um, that's as simple as that. In fact, I'll glue it on and then you can see it in line. Pass me some glue, dear. Straighten it up a little bit. Just keep it all nice and square. Uh, just be at me on there. So it's just a glue down that edge. Spray on that. Always put this on the inside. So the roof overlaps, so you'll have to trim the front down. Drop that there, keep it nice and straight, get that square behind it there. That's it, drop it there. And that'll do us. Um, I can cut the floor out and just do another piece so it holds it all together. That's it. And that is our starter. So now what I'd do is just ease these corners to match back in. Um, obviously that one will go slightly different because it's in on an apex. That one goes in there. That one goes in there. I tend to look at them and think do I need to trim anything but again in this I don't think you would. You just literally draw the lines in. So remember these are going down. Now you've got lines like that. And they're going across. Just follow your own lines through. A bit of sandpaper. I'll tear a bit off to you, save the mess here. Our envy cloth as we use, we don't tend not to use sandpaper, don't we? We find it disappears on us. Put your bit thick lines back in. So they're all there. We put a couple of holes in it as though it was the originals. <laughs> so there we are, and as you can see, um, I could actually chamfer these off. What I'm doing is pointing away. Doesn't matter if it's uneven because I think it would be anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to put big lines here, I can help it, Patricia. I might have the odd crack. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> he cracked. Steve likes his old buildings to look new. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe an answer. Unfortunately, there's no choice in the matter when I get my hands on it. There we are, that's that bit. I'll turn that round. 
and build the other side. I'll have to come away from you because I get up to the, just do it that way. And all this is doing is pushing the Formex. I'm pressing quite hard, I have to be honest. And then just turn around. Because we've got nice deep, we've put a good deep groove in. We've not put a little one in. It gives it a nice 3D. Even as I can, there's a little bit stuck up here and corners, but I think that's how they'd finish it off. So there we are, that's the first part, the first part of the roof front done. I'll make the other side. Um, I'll cut a piece for this first and just pop that in so I've got the, all that solid and then we'll do show you some more bits. And I'll just square that off so I can see where I'm going. Pencil. So right, what we'll do now is we'll just screw a floor in. Um, I'll leave it, I was going to think of putting planks on it but no, nah, I'll just glue it, the glue a straightforward floor together. And I'll do it the usual way. Glue one edge first. A little bit on the other side. That's it. That's it, so get that nice and square. Into there. And then press it on. the first bit there. And then turn it on its back. Well, yeah. must be out the activator. Alright, oh, that's it. Glue that one on. This stuff is so easy to work with. It's so simple, it's beyond belief. That's it. And that's got that part in and then what we do is make sure everything's glued on it that's it um, so I'll probably just make sure everything's nice and level that's it so it makes it A bit of turn a little bit of sandpaper while we're done with it. There it is. And that's part one done of that bit. So um, now what we've got to do is do the other part and uh, we'll cut the face, decide where we're going to go with that one and um, this is this bit. I'm going to drop that in there like so and now I need to just mark out what I want for a shop windows and that will go in there like so. so I'll pop that aside, half a building, and I'll draw out our shop front and tea rooms. Right, so we're just going to do the shop front. So I've done this part, 
I'll just quickly go through this part how we're going to do this. Um, I've cut two inch half inch strips off. I'll just take the back off of these. Quickly stick these on like so. One, stick the other one on. So just so it's flush on the inside of the window. Like so. Rub these down. Keep it all nice and neat. Cut those off. Same with that one. What I did then was cut two pieces of three mil Formex, drew my line an eighth of an inch from the top, wound it out with the wider one, and then just rounded the edge to make two pieces of uh, like a, to form the boards at the bottom. Then measure the one I need, the wider one, which is that one, drop it on there, and we've got five mil either side so we'll quickly cut off a couple of pieces uh, so we want one two three four two four like that that and then we're going to glue those on the bottom like so um, the easiest way to do it is instead of trying to mitre it all I don't really see a lot of point in that I think this is just as simple it's not a big complex piece of um, work it's not got massive patterns in it so just pop these on like this nice and simple Same on that side. That one there. That one there. Now the reason I did this one to that edge instead of going all the way back because you've got a door frame spring. So we'll close the door that opens inwards at the back of those. And that makes that simpler. Just give them a little spray. 
then measure the two pieces for the top. Which would be that one. Got that one off. There's one. And that one. Which is two. Obviously, as near as you can get them, it makes it easier. Um, but then, so I've got those two pieces. Then what I do then is just make sure these are level. And where they are level, just carefully, can you still see that? Yeah. Trim them down so you get a nice flush finish. This one, a little bit more tricky because you got to get your knife in. One part, same on that bit. What you're actually doing is sliding your knife along on there. And a quick sand. To make sure they are level. And check them. That one I could have done too, just a little bit thinner. Now I'll stick it on them trim it. So again, glue that one on there. And give it a little spray, then it makes it easier. See, get it nice and level so it's not overlapping too much. Same with that one. And then, like this one, I've gone just a little bit bigger than I needed to. So again, just slide your knife in. And carefully pair it off. Like so. You can actually just sand these if you wanted. It's just as simple, just takes a little bit longer. Same with that one and that one. And then where you've got the corners, just pop it in. Give you little wigglies or you're doing a window frame. So you're continuing that line round. Same the other way. And that, and then just follow the contour, a little bit of sandpaper, so you're rounding it off, Lean out that edge. Turn it all up. And same with that one. Following your contours. Looks like me, you just got a little bit big there. You can either sand it or just carefully trim it with your knife. And that's the 
two little bases at the bottom of the stove. So, and what I did then was just draw a little square inside just to give it a little bit of shape and um, follow that one down. Again, nice and light pencil lines. If you want to keep these plain, and it's again, it's not a, it's whatever it, you want to add to it yourself, and then just carefully with your roller, your little scraper. corner to corner. Turn that way. And just go around them again, just to give them a little bit more depth. And there we are, and that's how we're going to do the bottoms. And um, the next thing we'll do, obviously, I'll repeat the performance on there, and just do these two. But the other part we'll do on here, we'll put a ceiling. Um, not with that stuff. I'm just to need to... Three mil. Um. Make the seal the overlap in here a bit, shall we? Three eighths. So again, measure three eighths from this, from there, three eighths from there. Draw that. And this one, I'll round off at the beginning. Can you see that there, Patricia? Yep. So. Round that edge off first. Let's get a nice smooth round edge. Turn it over. The red on there is just somebody's printed board, whatever they were using, what we've got in the scrap bin. Um, just turn it round so you don't see it. Cut that to length. Drop that in. that in there and that's the frames done ready for the glass and we'll put it on the other side um, I think we've this is, we've left this as a wooden beam across the top and um, we've bricked up the sides because that'll match up with the other bricks and um, I think this one we'll probably do in small panes so that makes sense in, in the so it's a bit more Georgian so it'll like four rows the glass going down and then going across and the same with the other one and I'll just cut this one and pop this one in
Tiny little bit tight that one. And again, that's that one in there. And that goes underneath. Like so. And I'll just put something with a little bit of weight in. 